was 50 years ago when my mother and my father began an unforgettable journey. I was just seven months old when they moved deep into the jungles of Papua. We made our home among a small tribal group known as the Sawi. My dad learned the language, my mom treated the sick, all with the purpose of telling them about Jesus. But the people did not respond. The Sawi were headhunters, they were cannibals. They lived in a constant state of war. As time passed, we began to lose hope that the gospel would take root. My parents were faced with a decision. Finally, Dad explained to the Sawi that if they kept on fighting, we could no longer stay. But the Sawi were desperate to keep us around, so they finally agreed to make peace with each other. In order for that to happen, each Sawi village gave an infant, a baby boy, to their enemies. And this child became known as the Peace Child. It was through this unexpected exchange, buried deep in their culture, that my parents were given a perfect opportunity to share the gospel with the Sawi, to explain to them that God sent his very own peace child, Jesus, to make peace with us. It's been 50 years since that day, and we're very anxious to see how the Sawi are doing. It's uh, fairly early in the morning on June 23rd, and Everybody's still asleep, and I'm, this is the day, I'm on my way. I was up pretty late last night making sure that I had everything I needed, and I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I got quite a few gifts for people. I think I'm set to go. It's been almost 25 years now since I've been there. Uh, I don't know how much things have changed. It's possible that a lot of the people that I know are no longer alive, but uh, I think some of my friends will still be there and it's going to be an amazing reunion with them. I'm joining my two brothers, Shannon and Paul. My dad just turned 77 and this is his first time back in many, many years. So for our family, for my brothers and my dad and I, this is the trip of a lifetime. All we do is climb And we'll just keep on climbing Until the day we die Until the day that 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 we die Kaigar tribesmen from upriver, and they're the ones who actually uh, paddled our family in on this very river. And a couple of three of these guys were actually the actual paddlers from that time. It's, I couldn't believe this. <laughs> he's so proud because he said we gave them to the Sawi. Yeah, they're real proud because they said they gave up the mom and dad and gave them to the Sawi. <laughs> they're enemy tribes. So not kind of yeah. Her father was one of the paddlers, and he he died, so she's taking his place. She's taking these, his place. These two women are the daughters of the paddlers who brought oh, okay. mom and dad. And they have their weapons in their canoes here to reenact the fact that they brought their weapons uh, because they were heading into enemy territory. So each person is here with a meaning. There's symbolism in each person's presence on this little uh, flotilla of three canoes. Just have taken us to the same place where we landed. Yeah, to the very same spot. Normally, 
Normally you wouldn't hear someone say, it's great to see so many old people. Disease took its toll. Death from warfare took its toll. But now to come back and see that there are just throngs among the crowds of people, throngs of people with gray hair and old enough that they have trouble walking along the trail, that's a special joy. So they've reached out and they've invited I think five tribes around them. So they're making themselves a base uh, because something really significant happened among them. And it seems like this has been implanted in the hearts of the Sawi that they aren't meant to just sit around enjoying Christ and getting fat and happy. The whole point is to reach out and share it with others. So they're doing that. It's, we're seeing it in action. Yeah. He's explaining he's from a remote village. And after the Bible was translated, someone brought the scriptures to him and he believed. Isaac. He's, he's taken a Christian name called Isaac. They really rolled out the red carpet. Hundreds and hundreds of people from five different tribes were here. And for me, the emotion was just overwhelming. I think one of the things that struck me, maybe the most, was how many people grabbed my hand or gave me a hug, often with tears in their eyes, and said that they had been my close friend or playmate when I was little. And I was surprised how many of the older people are still alive who actually witnessed my parents' arrival. So it's amazing to see the legacy of God's grace through my parents and their obedient step of faith 50 years ago. electricity except for a little generator and uh, there's no emails there's no text messages <laughs> just you know it's just quiet here and it's beautiful and, and there's a connection with the people here and uh, just waking up in the morning hearing the sounds of the jungle and uh, I don't know I've slept better last night than I have in years even though I'm just sleeping on the floor in this village. So there is something to going back. I've, because I've lived so many places in diff different parts of the world, traveled so much, I've never been able to really say where's home. But I think this would probably be more than anywhere else. This is where I was born and raised. So this will always be special for me. Oh, this is... um. These are grubs, and inside they're just full of grease, and the heads are really it is strange, actually, the more I think about it. But they grow on you. When we came for the first time, there was a lot of enmity between the tribes. Coming back after so many years to see the relationship between these people where there's really almost no line of demarcation it's between amazing. them. Really they're, they're just treating each other like brothers and sisters. They love each other. They love each other. <laughs> they share the leadership and the church services. And they're intermarrying now, too. And they're intermarrying? Yeah. So the, the, uh, the walls that have been broken down by virtue of the gospel's impact <coughs> are very, very obvious. We had been told we would be helping to baptize 50 new believers. And so <coughs> the first two groups came down, about 25 each. And we thought that must be it. And then they kept coming, filing down into the water, 25 at a time. And I personally baptized 15 out of these 25 groups. So assuming it was 15 at each time, that's 325. Some missionaries here from other parts of the country who are helping to educate and disciple and 
reinforce the work of those parents. And the all of them generation. have read Peace Child. And they've all been influenced <laughs> by Peace Child. That's a big reason why they're here. Yeah. yeah. It's like a dream for them to go to the And these are place. marvelous young men and women yeah, from <laughs> other cultures, from distant parts of the country, who have come here to build on the foundation that, that our family laid. yard around here. My dad made this bridge that I'm standing on more than 40 years ago, probably 45 years ago. And my world just revolved around this area, just swimming in this river. His name is Moses and he was just saying that he used to really enjoy jumping off the tree here with me into the river. <laughs> He said when my parents came years ago that they were still living in darkness. God's word has been planted here, the gospel has been received, the place is full of peace, it's a safe place to live. We're very blessed. I want to give thanks to God because the gospel came here. And I want you to know that when you leave on the airplane tomorrow, that we're going to stay faithful to the gospel as long as we live. It's everything to us. Goodbye and God bless you, he says. <laughs> The younger generation is really thriving. There are lots of challenges, but they're, they're aggressive. They're, um, they're taking places of leadership. I'm impressed with the desire to progress, the desire to make an impact. I'm encouraged that these tribes that used to be mortal enemies are so close to each other now, they, they see themselves almost as one. The old tribal barriers and divisions that I sensed and knew as a child have long since broken down. And they really feel themselves as being one people. Part of that is because they, they share a sense of significance and identity by virtue of their story that has been told. The trip to Kamur and the reunion with the Sawi reminded me what an incredible privilege it is to join God in His journey to the nations. And it makes me wonder how many more people around the world are still waiting to experience what the Sawi have experienced. <laughs>